my name is Jess and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you some thoughts on Me Made May. It was the first time I had participated in Me Made May this year and I learned a lot of things from it so I thought I would share those with you today. It's also going to be a little look at what is coming up for me handmade wardrobe wise based on what I learned from Me Made May. So um, yeah that's sort of the basis of this video. Uh, before we jump into things, I just wanted to show you what I'm wearing. Um, I'm wearing my new Mustard Spotty Astoria, which I'm so in love with. Uh, there'll be a blog post up on this on Tuesday with some more photos, and I'll be talking about it in more depth next week. Uh, but I have paired it with my um, Salt and Pepper shirt from Lara Sana. So, like I said, I'll have more photos of this outfit up on the blog on Tuesday, so make sure you watch out for that one. Okay, so as I said, this year was my first Me Made May experience. I only set up my Jessica Lorraine Instagram account this time last year, uh, so I missed Me Made May by about a month. Um, but yeah, this year obviously I had more clothes, so it worked, a bit, it worked in my favour. Uh, so I really, really wanted to participate in Me Made May this year. Um, the pledge I set myself was to wear at least one handmade garment every day throughout the month. Um, I managed to do that for most days, but there were a couple of days where I didn't. Um, I was also trying to wear something different on all of those days. I think I outfit repeated twice maybe. Um, well, near the end I outfit repeated a few more times, but I didn't share those on social media. So I'm really happy with how it went. I didn't wear handmade every single day but I am really pleased with the amount of handmade I managed to wear. Um, so I just want to first of all talk about some of the things that Me Made May like did for me in a positive way. So um, I think one of the things that I loved about Me Made May was putting together different outfits because I didn't want to like wear the same thing all the time. Um, I guess before I did Me Made May, I sort of had my set outfits, especially for work, where I'd kind of rotate through a few pieces. Uh, and so for a while there, I was probably wearing like a lot of the same thing, like each week. So I'd sort of do, you know, like my Mineta dress on a Monday and then my wrap dress on a Tuesday. So yeah, the, I'd sort of tend to go back to the things that I loved um, and wore them all the time, which is not a bad thing, but I think I have so much handmade in my wardrobe, it's nice to be able to wear all of them. Uh, so that's one of the things that I really loved about Me Made May. Um, whilst I'm talking, I'm just going to have um, my outfits running through here just so you can see them all. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed that aspect of Me Made May and it's definitely made me realise that I can pair a lot of different things um, together and it's a bit more mixy and matchy. Mixy and matchy? Um, but yeah, anyway, I sort of, I tend to look at my wardrobe in a different light now and I'm more bold with my, um, or what pieces I'm going to put together. So, for example, like this Mineta, or this Mineta, this is a story of with this shirt underneath. Like, it's really cute and I love this outfit today, but it may not have been something I thought about doing before Me Made May. So, yeah, that was one of the, like, big positives, I guess, that came out of Me Made May. Uh, there were no negatives that came out of Me Made May, but this was sort of like, yeah, a good, good thing in my wardrobe. Um, so a couple of things that I learned from Me Made May this year. It's really hard to say Me Made May, and especially if you're saying it a lot of times, so I apologise if I mess that up at some point. Um, but a few things I learned is that I have quite a few things missing from my wardrobe. So, oh, and obviously that's going to be the case. I have tr been trying not to buy any clothes this year and I've, yeah, I literally go into a shop now and instead of buying clothes, I look at the clothes that are in there and think of the patterns and the fabric that I have at home that I can make it with instead. So, I really haven't bought anything um, much ready to wear this year. Uh, so, yeah, there are obviously a few gaps in my wardrobe still because I haven't had time to sew everything. So, um, basics are a big one. That's where I fell down a lot in Me Made May was, um, like on the weekends when I'm sort of just at home, not really doing too much. I have got like my Virginia leggings, but apart from that, I don't really have any other like just chill loungewear type stuff. So, that's something I definitely want to, um, include a bit more of in my wardrobe. Um, the other thing that was lacking in my wardrobe was skirts. Okay, I am a massive skirt and dress wearer because I just prefer them over pants and in winter I find that I stay a lot warmer when I'm wearing tights. Um, 
So anyway, I don't have a lot of skirts in my wardrobe. All the skirts that I do have, they're sort of more casual skirts. Um, you know, like I've got a few maxi skirts and my floral um, thrift shop skirt that I've got. I don't, I've got like a lot of tight like not tight but you know like my knit pencil skirts and stuff but I don't have a lot of like circle skirts or pleated skirts and skirts like where you just put on over a um, tights and wear with boots in winter or whatever so I really want to add some more of those to my wardrobe and some plain versions of those as well as printed versions the other thing that I am lacking is mix um, pieces that I can mix and match together so um, I think that's where having the skirts will be really handy um, and yeah I just I just need a few more pieces that I can wear with lots of different things so I guess that kind of goes into my next topic which is sort of a little bit about my personal style because I think it's really easy to just see a pattern and love that pattern and make it out of a fabric like this Astoria but if you don't have anything to wear it with you're not going to wear it as much so with this um, print especially because it's a bit of a bold print. Well, it's not bold but I feel like the spots are quite out there and different. Um, you know I wanted to make sure I had things to wear it with so I paired it with um, my basics pocket skirt from the Calafé collection which I made last month um, which is that really gorgeous blue denim and I kind of had this outfit in mind when I was picturing that skirt. Um, I'm wearing it with black tights today. I've worn it with jeans. Um, I love pairing it with black actually. I wore it with um, a dress the other day. So I wore it with the top of a dress because I like the skirt portion. And it looks super cute. So that's how I know I definitely need to add some um, like circle skirts into my wardrobe. Um, but yeah, I think that you really have to think about the stuff that you're making and what you're going to pair it with. Because otherwise, like I said, you're not going to wear it. So um, yeah, that's something that I really need to look at adding into my wardrobe, a few more things that I can sort of mix and match with. Uh, so that kind of brings me on to my next little section of this video, which is where to from here. Um, so I'm going to be doing a series of blog posts over the next month or so, uh, explaining how I'm going to fill these gaps in my wardrobe and, you know, some like inspiration posts and mood boards and stuff like that. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to have on the blog this week is a little bit about personal style. So it's just going to be looking at, um, you know, what I think my style is compared to what my style actually is. And I think that's a really interesting concept and something that I've really only discovered there is a, um, a difference for me um, in what I think my style is or what I wish my style was compared to what my style actually is and I think my, me made my has helped me realize that the style that I actually have is really really like good for me like I like it but I'm always wanting to be something different and I think it was a really big eye-opener for me to you know start looking at my own style and what I like to wear and not focus so much on you know when you see somebody wearing like the most gorgeous outfit and you really want that um, so in that blog post I'm going to be looking at my Pinterest board and comparing that to my handmade wardrobe because like there is already a lot of difference between what I pin on there and what I end up making. Um, during being made May my sister helped me clean well, our entire house, um, like a big spring clean but we went through my wardrobe and she commented on how completely different our styles are. Um, and we are, we do like really similar things and I always, always have this wish that I could dress like her but I never end up dressing like her because I have my own style. Um, so she is very muted, sort of blacks and stripes and um, denims and you know, sort of um, a more minimal um, look, not minimal with the amount of clothes she has, but a minimal look which really looks gorgeous on her and I always envy how beautiful she looks. Um, whereas my style is a bit more pattern, print, um, floral, that's one of the things I've like realised is that I love floral. Um, and yeah, I do have some basic pieces in there but I am definitely a print girl. So for example, you know, my Ella top is this gorgeous gorgeous pink floral um, which you know is a little bit not out there but it's a little bit different and it's quite um, yeah quite a bold print so I'm really into into florals and I think it, you know it's 
time to embrace that. If I like wearing florals, why don't I make more stuff with florals? Um, like I said, obviously that needs to be brought back to my point before about mixing and matching. Um, I need to have stuff that I can, you know, match things within my wardrobe. Um, but I think, you know, just style, you know, you should just go with it. Like, that's what I've come to discover. You know, I'm 26 now, um, and I think the older you get, the less you sort of care about current trends as such. Um, and the more you start focusing on your own style and what you like to wear and what looks good on you and your body shape. Um, you know, for example, the other one that I have here is my Katarina dress from Seamwork magazine. And this is like one of my favourite makes ever because I listened to myself when I was um, picking fabric for it. So uh, I spoke about this before, but originally I was going to just make a black one because I thought that would be a nice... Um, like addition to my wardrobe, I'd be able to wear it with heaps of stuff and you know, it's a good good colour to have in your wardrobe. And then I was looking at the black fabric at Spotlight and I was just, it just wasn't inspiring me. It didn't, I just couldn't envision that it just wasn't really working. And then I saw this, um, I think it's a voil, floral, um, voil I think it was, and I fell in love with it straight away. Like I just, I kind of looked at it picked it up, put it down, walked away from it, came back to it again, and just in the end, I went, do you know what? I think this is just what I'm meant to be doing. So, and now, like, this is one of the, like, honestly, the most, most favourite mates in my wardrobe. And I get a lot of comments when I wear this because I listened to my true self and went with my style. So, yeah, I'm just going to be doing a series of blog posts exploring personal style, exploring the differences between... Um, you know, Pinterest, which is sort of like our um, our wanted wardrobe, our like what we think we would like to wear, compared to what we actually end up sewing, which I think is a really interesting concept. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of going to be the blog post for the next couple of weeks, um, along with makes, of course. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to explore that a little bit further, and you know, I'll go into some patterns that I want to add. Um, jersey tops, that's the other thing that I'm missing in my wardrobe, jersey tops, you know, just plain jersey tops or printed jersey tops that I can just chuck on with jeans or wear with skirts and stuff like that. I don't have all of my old Supre stuff um, and yeah, I really want to add some more of those into my wardrobe. So the Briar pattern, for instance, is a really good pattern this month because it is essentially a jersey top and well, it is a jersey top and I have quite a few variations of it that I want to try. So yeah, that's sort of... What I wanted to talk to you about today, I hope that this was semi-interesting for you and it made sense what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go over what I learned from Mermaid May, um, show you my outfits which you will have seen at the beginning of this video um, and just talk about where to from here. So yes, I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. The other thing that I just wanted to quickly mention is about a post I put up the other day about virtual assistant admin services. Um, so I just wanted to go into depth with that a little bit more. Um, so essentially, I work in admin, um, but I also do this, um, you know, in my spare time. And I also run a creative small business, Little Miss Lorraine. And I find that I love doing the admin side of it as well as the creating side of it. And I know that a lot of people don't necessarily like doing the admin side of it. Probably more for creative small business. Obviously, if you're a blogger, you probably would like to do your blogging and stuff. Um, but I just thought I'd put it out there that I would really love to help you move your blog forward, move your small business forward. So if you would like any administration assistance, it could just be scheduling social media, graphic creation, um, posting blog posts, writing blog posts, or helping you to write blog posts, um, editing, formatting, like sewing patterns. Not obviously, I do pattern testing, but not... Uh, more just like formatting sewing patterns and knitting patterns and crocheting patterns and embroidery patterns, you know, just like the booklets and everything. If you want help doing that, um, you know, some small graphic designy stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's there's a whole list of stuff on the webs on the blog that you can go over and have a look at. There's a virtual services tab at the top that you can click on, and that will give you a list of all of the stuff that I can help you with. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're not in Australia, I'm more than willing to help you out, um, obviously, because it's all online. Um, and I will tell you up front if I can't do anything. So if you ask me to do something and it's like way, way out of my skill range, I'm not going to waste your time being like, yeah, I can do that. And then spending like four hours trying to work out how to do it. So 
yeah if at any point you need any admin assistance just flick me an email or you can fill out the form that is on the virtual assistance tab page and yeah we can work out how I can help you out um, so yeah I think it's just a really nice way to help people move forward and it's something I'm really passionate about and an area that I would like to move myself into work-wise eventually so yeah just a little plug there for my services anyway I hope you enjoyed this video guys if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next week for my June makes video